Hello good people, welcome to Keep Left, your old car guide to all things cars and all things automotive. As always, my name is Kev, the host who knows most about cars. And the car on review today is one of those cars that has a star-studded past in terms of accolades. This car has more accolades than Michael Jordan. If you don't believe me, follow me. The history of the Honda Fit is so star-studded in terms of accolades that, <laughs> listen to this, Japan Car of the Year 2001, 2002, and also 2007, 2008, Japan Car of the Year 30th Anniversary, 2007, 2008, RJC Car of the Year 2002, Car and Driver Best Small Car 2007, 2013, 2010, Best Seller List, and a small show in the UK called Top Gear <laughs> nominated this car in their survey as the best small car in 2006 and also the second best car all round in terms of cars in 2006 in their Honda uh, in their survey. This was only second to the Honda S2000. IGN Best Car 2006, Green Organization's Green Car of the Year 2007, 2008, and the list is endless. As in this, <laughs> this reminds me of the picture where Michael Phelps is wearing um, uh, so many gold medals. This car is that good. And Honda uh, equip their different uh, fit models with different uh, engines. For example, uh, this is the 1.2 liter engine. This comes with the Earth, Earth Dreams uh, technology. I'll later on tell you what Earth Dreams entails. And uh, quite ably, it has also iVTEC. Let me take this opportunity to just help you note that I've also done an, uh, another review on the Honda CRV, which I ably talk about the iVTEC. So if you haven't watched that video, take this opportunity to watch that. There'll be a link for that video coming up anytime from now and uh, back to the Honda Fit. Uh, the other engines that this car comes with include a 1.3 liter engine, a 1.5 liter engine, uh, four cylinder. All of the engines that uh, Honda Fit come with are four cylinder engines. There's a further 1.5 liter engine, Earth Dreams technology, a 1.5 liter petrol hybrid engine, and finally, an engine just that is just a testament of how good. Honda Fit is and how much they want to take care of all the customer groups, a 1.5 liter diesel engine, which was only available in India. In terms of uh, in terms of gearboxes, this car this car models comes with uh, four different types of gearboxes. One is the five speed manual, a six speed manual, a further seven speed dual clutch gearbox and finally a CVT transmission. That just goes to tell you how much Honda want you to be at home with the car. Different gearboxes for different driving styles and different engines. These engines pack a lot of power and a lot of economy in terms of how they achieve their drivability. Now, onto the interior of the car. Stick at, until the end of this video where I'm going to be revealing a very important attribute about this car. Something that changes the way we look about these small cars. Yeah, so follow me. So the interior of the Honda Fit is uh, is something very nice, by the way. In fact, the biggest thing that just pounces on me when I enter this car is the fact that there are minimal buttons. I mean, I can only see a hazard button here for your hazards, and then uh, the start engine, which uh, this car comes with, it doesn't have a key. For this, it also comes with a fob for you to access the car. The other buttons I can see is uh, for traction control are here. For traction control, uh, for your side mirrors, your headlights, and uh, the economy drive for this. Aside from that, nothing else. I know traditionally some of the things we would be looking at would be probably where are the AC buttons and all that. Soon that will come to light when we start uh, driving this car to see how well it drives. In terms of space, this car has more than enough space in terms of size. Remember, this is a small car and as such, you'd expect that there would be minimal space. Remember, I'm, I'm quite a tall guy and if you just think about it, this is more than enough space. In fact, this car feels big <laughs> in a small way, if you get what I'm saying. The car also comes very ably equipped with a lot of compartments. Let's just number them. One, uh, there are two more, which I would assume these are cup holders. There's another compartment here. There are another three compartments here. There's a compartment here. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's it's quite a spacious car in terms of considerations to the consumers. Uh, they quite put into their consideration. At the back of this car, just look at the space. I have not adjusted the seat of uh, from when I was sitting in the driver's seat. And look at the space. I can tell you for free, I have been in SUV cars and uh, medium-sized SUV cars that have less legroom. So if you think about it, this car has a lot of space. The other thing is, you can notice that the floor is... Uh, very uh, very flat in terms of uh, the transmission tunnel this car quite ably is a front wheel drive and uh, the other thing that aids this fact is uh, the, the tank for this car is uh, fitted in the middle of this car as opposed to at the back or under the seat and the reason for that will come at the end of this video quite something very unique about this car in the boot uh, maintains uh, the dark interior of the car which is very nice uh, easy to clean if you look at this car the boot is very big in fact let me just pop in so that you can see i pop in <laughs> you see the boot has a good size not that it, it's anyone who ever sit in the boot for transportation but this is just to give you the the size of all this if you think honda are out of tricks in terms of their cars you'll be surprised look at the amount of space you get when you fold the rear seats i know there are other station wagons and hatchbacks which can achieve space but in my opinion, Honda do it best. In fact, if you look at this space, this space is enough for you to chill with your significant other if you're the sort of person who is into significant others. <laughs> Furthermore, why pay rent? You can actually move into this space if you think about it. Just look at the amount of space because I'm actually thinking I can put a table here, I can put my flat screen here, I can put my kitchenware here, and I can live here. This is a car that has space and the bulks of it, considering the size of this car. So uh, this car, again, in order to achieve this uh, capacity, this car doesn't come with a spare wheel. In fact, what it comes with is, uh, if you come with me in the safety materials here, let me just move this. What it comes with is uh, this compressor and this fluid and this fluid uh, so what happens you feed the fluid into the compressor and then you connect it to your tires so if you come with me to the tires this this car comes with the uh, run flat tires which means the sidewall of this tire is very strong in the event of a puncture you can actually go a few kilometers uh, to a safe place where you can change it so now the fact that the car doesn't come with a spare wheel means that you will connect your uh, compressor to the tire fill hole and then the fluid that is inside there will fill any punctures that would be there yes it becomes dangerous for instance if you are to get a tire burst that is a drawback if you get a tire burst there's no way you're fixing a tire burst with uh, the fluid but it's something that helps to save space which contributes to the fact that this car has a lot of space this car if you think about it has more space than most uh, medium-sized cars with this generation of the hondas they moved uh, into what you would mostly see in uh, crvs uh, this front one liner sort of a facelift and uh, i like it so much this one maintains a uh, halogen headlights the one thing that i love about the exterior of the honda fit is the audacity in terms of the design just look at this arc line here look at this i know of car manufacturers who wouldn't even have bothered to put anything there no mentioning names obviously <laughs> But the lines tell you about the sort of company that Honda is. They are not afraid of taking chances. And that's what you like about a car manufacturer. The lights, uh, these ones, you can't miss them from behind. In fact, they take sort of a design that is uh, reminiscent of most Volvos, which is very nice. You can see this car from miles away. The other thing is, this car reminds me so much of the Type R. Why? Look at this. As much as they are aesthetic for aesthetic purposes and they don't work, having such details on the car is good. This bumper, I'm just thinking if this bumper was just plain, it wouldn't look the same. But the fact that there are these non-functional vents makes up for so much in terms of the design. Oh my God. The lines of this car are so good. Obviously, a, a lot of thought was put into the designing of this car. The side mirrors come with uh, side mirror blinkers, which is very nice. This one has alloy rims, which is very good. They add into the styling of this car. In the front, there are no fog lights, but again, with the superficial vents, 
the design of the bumper is taken to an, to the next level. If you can picture picture this uh, bumper just plain, and it will be something different, probably something very boring, but Honda don't do boring. Good stuff. In terms of drivability, this car feels very light, yet planted on the road, considering this car. This is a, is a small car, subcompact car, in fact, that's the category that Honda put it into. When you come to the center console, remember when we were looking at it, it is almost uh, lacking in terms of buttons. So if you think about it, uh, what Honda have done is they've put this uh, touch, touch screen sort of a center console whereby if you want to add or reduce the level of air intake, you just uh, press on and to change the modes, you just uh, touch on it, which is very nice in terms of moving into, into the feature in terms of what the car offers. The car also comes standard with, uh, with this touch screen radio just to go with the feel of having a uh, buttonless uh, center console, which is uh, quite good in terms of this category of cars. Not most of them uh, have this in terms of their proposition. The drivability of this car is very good uh, because remember this is uh, the 1200cc engine, which comes with the Earth Dreams technology, which are able to help this car in terms of uh, the, its green proposition and in terms of the footprint that this car leaves onto Mother Earth, which is a nice thing. Uh, Honda are always on the forefront in terms of uh, technology with VTEC, and now they have uh, Earth Dreams, which implies into various different uh, things that the engine management system is able to achieve in order to give the car sort of a green uh, proposition to its its uh, use. Earth Dreams uh, basically is uh, within uh, Honda's hierarchy, and it is charged with the duty of uh, coming up with uh, ably uh, a cleaner footprint in terms of uh, emissions, and also enabling the cars to be able to pack a punch in terms of uh, their drivability. For instance, some of the things that uh, Earth Dreams employ is direct injection, reduced uh, friction within the engine in tunnels in the in the in the pistons, the corn rods, and all that. Also, it employs an electronic fuel pump. It has reduced internals in terms of thickness. Uh, the block material and the cylinder heads have a thinner material, which is uh, most probably aluminum. Equally, this car has a variable valve timing and control, which is in line with IVTEC, as I showed you earlier on. And finally, the car comes with a high capacity EGR. This is all to increase the efficiency of uh, this car in terms of uh, its footprint. Remember, we are going into a point where uh, most uh, petrol cars are being forced out by their hybrid compatriots. So having, having a manufacturer that is able to think uh, two steps ahead also gives hopes in terms of uh, people who are petrol heads. I like the Honda Fit uh, so much, but with uh, anything good, there are always drawbacks. Some of the drawbacks that I can think about for this car is uh, the fact that it doesn't come with a spare wheel puts a huge question mark in terms of, in the event of a tire burst. That is on the extreme. If in the event of a tire burst, you will be left stranded and there's no space for the spare wheel. Where, uh, as I showed you, there's a compressor and the fluid for, for just mending the tires. The second thing I can think about is in the generation of the Hondas, I know that Honda issued several recalls in terms of uh, the DCT transmission, the dual, the dual clutch uh, transmission uh, for upgrade, upgrades on their, uh, on their computer systems. And these were three consecutive recalls. So I would stay away from the dual clutch uh, variants of uh, this car. Aside from that, uh, aside from that this is uh, practically and, and uh, quite ably one of the best small cars that I've reviewed. In fact, one of the best cars I've reviewed this year in terms of uh, size and actually practicality. Practicality. This is a very nice car. So how much will this cost you? In Kenya, these cars are going anything between... Remember, it has a very wide range of uh, variants. So in Kenya, you will do anything between 1.3 million for the entry uh, models, uh, which is 1.3 million or uh, $13,000. On the upper scale of uh, that uh, chart, we will talk about anything to the tune of 2 million shillings or $20,000. Obviously, dependent on the variant that you choose. Uh, others will be cheaper, others will be uh, a bit more expensive. But aside from that, 
whatever variant that you get of the Honda Fit. Honda Fit have a history of always producing very good cars. And as such, you will never regret. In fact, I have a theory that Honda have slowly been eating into the category of becoming one of the most reliable cars. I know that category is currently held by yours truly, the Toyotas, but their Honda cousins are actually pacing up and they are catching on to them. This is a part of the video where, as I promised, I'm going to give you the biggest selling point of this car, in my opinion. I'm a huge lover of Hondas because I believe they always go over and above in terms of satisfying their customers' needs. So if you follow me, this car I'll show you. So Honda uh, talk about something called magic seats in terms of their seats. So I'll show you what their seats do to bring the magic <laughs> into this car. So the first thing I'll do is move the seat to the front. This is where the magic starts. And then I'll pop out the headrest. Once you pop out the headrest, put it somewhere like the driver's seat. And then with this seat, you just pull the lever and make sure it slips until the very end. This seat has ability to sleep flat. Follow me to the back seat and see this. See, not most seats will slip up to this angle in terms of the co-driver seat and even the driver's seat. Look at this. This is simply inspirational. Whoever came up with this at Honda, kudos to you. I think you need to get a raise for this. I hope you got a raise for this back in 2015. But this is some of the things that I talk about. Honda always go over and above because this is, this is what they talk about when they say magic seats. This is very comfortable. You can always chill uh, somewhere in a camping area, just chill like this. Even when you're waiting for someone and uh, probably you, you, you want to just wait somewhere comfortably, this is very comfortable. And if you think about it, you can actually sleep in this position. If I was just to stretch myself, then, you see? This is very good and it's actually very comfortable. That's the, the, that's the most important fact about all this. That was part one of the magic seats. Fact number two about the magic seats is that traditionally we know that most seats, most car seats uh, at the back, especially for station wagons and hatchbacks, will have the ability of folding up uh, this direction. So this is obvious in terms of folding up. This increases the boot space, and I'll show you much more in terms of the boot space. Now, did you know, just pull here, did you know that uh, Honda, Honda went to the extent of even giving you more options in terms of space? Magic seat, you just pull here, there's a lever down here, this, you pull it, and then you lock it. Look at the amount of space you get. In fact, what I think about is, if, if you are to carry something like flower pots, which you don't want to put in the boot because they'll fall, you can just put them here. This increases the capacity of this car to extends that we, we are not witnessing. The only other car that I've noticed with this feature will fall in the family of Honda, which is a Honda Airwave, which the seats can do this thing. So Honda, kudos to you. In conclusion, I am very impressed by the Honda Fit. <laughs> it's a car that I wish someone can just give me for free. This is a very good car uh, and especially in its category of small and sub compact cars. Uh, thank you so much for sitting through this video and uh, if you like this uh, episode give it a thumbs up and until next time it is peace.